this is Light Cars Entertainment. I'm speaking on to you on married clinics. And before we go further, we just want to appreciate your observation, your feedbacks, and everybody that have been staying through all this while. We want to say thank you for watching, and we do hope that this is a blessing unto you in your relationship and marriage. On today's episode, we'll be opening our eyes to so many things that we will be needing as regards marriage. We all know that we have laid the foundation from episode how marriage should look like, how you need to make your marriage a covenant braised marriage, not just an ordinary coming together of husband and wife or coming together of one person in case of like a contract. No, that is not what marriage suggests. So today, by his grace, we are going to be looking inward to some ma major and vital five important things that you need in marriage, that you need to get the understanding. And honestly, that this understanding is being established. You might not as doing more, or let me say, you, mon you might not have doing best at your best in your marriage. Now, today, we are going to be looking at number one, which is God. It is important for you to know that God is overall head of the universe. And God will not create man that is not going to be in use of. God is a God of mankind. Hope you know that God is a God of all flesh. And God himself, he, he actually wants to do something on earth. And after Jesus Christ has returned back according to the mission that he has accomplished, so he can no longer come down. So he wants to establish his kingdom and dominion on earth. And he needs you and I. So number one thing that you need to find expression on by understanding the details is knowing God. I like to say to you that you need to know God as much as possible. In fact, you need to know God than you know whoever that has come in contact in your life, not even your parents. You need to be familiar with God. Numbers 22, 23 verse 6 says, I am God and I am not a man. You know, there are several times that you have trusted a man and they failed. Why don't you return back to God? You might be in that marriage and yet you don't really have understanding who God is. Your own is, you're just living your life because he gave you life to live. Why don't you go back to the creator of the universe, which is God himself? So when you understand who God is, it's the life makes it easier and things easy for you. You don't have issue. You don't have prayer. Even when prayer comes from outside, the Lord is ready to control it with you, even within. So number one vital truth that you need to know is God. Is God. The Bible says, I am God. I change it not. Man changes. Even you yourself at a point in time, you might change. People might begin to complain about you. that, ah. But I begin to see some changes in you. But you will not be able to explain because it has not really occurred to you. But God is God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He changes not. So he can't tell you that road is good and at the same time come back to say, I am sorry. I think that road is not good again. So I think the foundation truth you need to know before you even step in or you're already in is to know who God is. Go back to God. No matter what you're facing, no matter you are faced. I usually say this. Everyone will, will have one or two things pressure to face in life. And while we are on earth, you are not there to fun around. You are not there to enjoy yourself. There will be a time that your, your faith will be put to test. And at that time, you know, the amount of the knowledge of the word of God that you know will determine how you will escape through. How it will control you at that time. When you are in a frustration and it meets you while you are in God, it will suppress. Consider it when you don't even know who God is and you never knew. Maybe it can also help you. Then you will begin to, you know, take up, absorb any suggestion given to you from outside. So I'd like you to know that God is number one that you need to know in the journey of your life. Praise God. Amen. Uh, the second thing that we are going to be looking at is you yourself. I'd like you to know that God will not create someone that is not going to be fitting into his creation. So he created you because he knows that at a point in time, you will be useful. You will be, you will amount to value. People will value you. Your integrity is going to speak for you. Say, you are the most important person in your life. 
relationship, marriage, or whatsoever, they come second. You must take care of yourself. You must know who you are. You must know who God has created you to be. You must understand what you need to do. You must know who you need to work with. You must know who God has destined you to be. You must not be in a row to forget all those things. Many people, after a while, they forget who you are. They forget who they are. They just follow suit. They follow the crowd. They forget what they are, the original plan of God for their lives. Do you know that God created man in his own image? And in his likeness, he, he created them. He created them for a purpose. So if you don't understand who you are, anything actually can be thrown at you and you accept it. You can also, you know, you can be deceived at all that, okay, this is the way to go because you don't really understand who you are. So knowing yourself fully, knowing, understanding you yourself, it makes life easier for you. Even before you talk about marriage. Don't, don't wait a marriage. You're waiting for a man to come. You're waiting for a sister to come your way and you begin to lose it out. You don't add value to your life. You don't even take care of yourself. I used to take some people that even though you are passing through stuff and you begin to waste your life, what if, if you recover from the stuff, the stigma will still be in your life. So I like to say this to you that it is important that you understand very well who you are. Understand what God demands from you. Understand what you add you have inside of you as a value that you want to add to another person. You know that if you're a man, you can't just put your money where you know that you won't get any value for you. Of course, no. So also you women that you have tried everything possible, you will want to get married to somebody that will not add value to your life in replace. So I'm, I'm glad to tell you that you are the important person in life. The other person comes second. Get that today and hold on to yourself. That is where the self-love comes in. Self-love, you love yourself inside. Do you know that if you hate yourself, you will pass the aggression to another person because you virtually not like anybody. But if you like yourself, they, the love will be transferred to another person. So try as much as possible to love yourself. Guide yourself. Guide your thoughts. You remember, in your thoughts, a lot of things work there. The Bible says, from the abundances of earth, the mouth speaks. So mind what you speak to yourself. Even though you are hoping on God, you are waiting on God for something. Don't say, ah, my time has gone. Of course, I know that I can make it again. Of course, I know that no man is, is able to, to approach me again is, with this my age. I know that I can't give birth again. I know that our time has gone. Look at my parents. Look at my friends. They've gone. No. I'm glad to tell you that God is ready to take you up for wherever you are. Provided if you love yourself, if you know that there is a, there is a vital truth, bless you, or know that the Lord has placed inside of you. Nobody will tell you that you are good if you don't tell yourself that you are good. So take it now and hold on to it, trying as much as possible to love yourself in everything, everything in your thoughts. As you wake up in the morning, do some co personal confession. Do it. I am the I am the righteousness of God, and the right God Himself lives inside of me. I can't fail. I can't fail. I can't fail. So when you when you make it in life, you make it in a global way, in a massive way. And the same time, when you when you fail, you fail, you know, in a colossal way, like to so to speak, you fail woefully, and nobody wants to celebrate a failure. Now the and next thing that you need to put in mind, even before you think of anything, either you are in marriage or you're so seeking God for the end of either man or woman in marriage, is that you must understand your family. See, after God, you, your family come first. Your family follow, I mean. Because you know that it's your family that must add value to your destiny. You are not in a marriage to make life out of you. Or to make things the worst. It's either you are in that marriage and things get better. Or and it gets better. It can't be otherwise. Otherwise you are not really in where God has destined you to be. So a family is going to be basically what we are going to deal with before we close on, on this episode. But let me quickly chip in this. That a family is what God wanted. That is why he created Adam in the first place. 
you wanted a place where you can just come in in the evening, be with them, talk with them, tell them some other in instruction they needed to know as per lives, details that they needed to know that they must not fail in. And that's why he created family. Family like you, like you know, might not be what the way God wants it. Family is a one man, a one woman, and children that goes in line with the will of God. So your family is so important and you must try everything possible to make it work. You're a man. You know that God does not just want to make you a head. He, he gave you a kingdom. He gave you a, a, a government whereby you can control, but not control in anger, not control in, you know, steep neck, trying to frown your praise, trying to dominate. You know God. You know God. When he, when he wanted to give a bad description about marriage, he knew that it's a spiritual thing. He knew that, okay, this marriage is something that they might not understand. And he bring it alongside with church. He was talking about church and Jesus, which is the bridegroom of the church, the head of the church. And he was trying to say the same way Jesus will rule the church, the same way the husband should also rule, rule the marriage so that you will have the same frequency of power. You know, not too much, but you know that you are, you are prone to checks. You are, you are going to be in a marriage whereby the husband and wife can talk together. They can give themselves an, maybe a suggestion. You must not be the only person saying, my say is final. It is not done. That is not a covenant marriage. In the book of Genesis, when you read through 15, you read through 16 and 17, it talks about, it talks about covenants. You know, you understand what covenant mean. Covenant means that, okay, you have, you pick a date, you pick a venue that uh, you have two people into going into the covenant. Then you have people around them like a family friends that are going to bear witness. Then you have a animals. Then, then during that time, they have to pass the animal into two and they, there will be blood splashing everywhere. So it means that in that aspect, you are, you are going into a vow. And that is why some people go into the vow, they make some vow, and they quickly forget about it. They forget about it. They say that, oh, till death do us part. Have you forgot that part? So in marriage, you have your totality inside of it. Now, let's quickly go to the number four thing that you need to put in mind as a vital truth is that you need to not forget your career. Many people get into the marriage or get into themselves and they quickly forget who they are. They forget their beautiful dream from the beginning when they are teen, when they are like 18, 19, 20, when they gain admission to university and they quickly forget, I just want to get married. Marriage is, is important. Marriage is prominent. I need to be there. I need to go and have a taste of it. Brethren, I like to tell you that as good as marriage is, you must not lose yourself into it. You must do what? You must find your career. Find what God wants you to do. What God has placed in your heart. Like some episodes so far we talked about, you know, you have to marry somebody that compliments who you are. You are like a, you are like a water. is like a fire. It's all we can work together like they used to say. Of course, you need, to miss, you, know, you need someone that will help you bring who you are. That will bring woman inside of you. That will bring man inside of you. That thing that you feel one person can do. Like, of course, the Bible says two people is better than one. Because they have a good reward for their labor. So I like to tell us that you must seek and find wherever your career has. Maybe you want to, you are a writer, you know how to, to write book. And suddenly because of prayer, you are giving birth to a child and marriage, pressure and all that. You forgot about it. You need to go back to the drawing board and get it done. Start your life afresh because your children is going to ask you. Like I said, uh, some days um, my children were just asking me that, uh, Mommy, uh, you, you, everything is about church. I said, church is life. And that is how we continue doing our life like that. Though lastly, because of uh, our time schedule for this slot, so the last thing that you need to put in your mind, your mind is relationship. This is where you need to put this important in your heart because the, the, the level or the measure of your, the people that you know will determine what you're worth. If you know some good people, you naturally become good. If you hang around people that bring down the value 
bring down your value, doesn't even understand what marriage is, probably you might also want to fall in, into that trap. So I like you to uh, incline yourself with people that make matters. Try to make new friends. If you are in one, try to build a relationship. Make sure that the relationship in your life matter and you guide them jealously. So I want to leave on with this. And I, I, by the grace of God, we are going to be returning some other time. I pray before that time, we will be expressing your observation, your feedbacks, your comments and lies because this go in long way and we will be glad you do that. Thank you so much and have a great day.